establish themselves in the new world, trading shops began filling the streets of colonial America. One of these shops was the apothecaries. Upon entering the apothecary shop, the sweet aroma of spices, herbs, and roots filled the air. Jars beautifully decorated with cherubs, birds, and fruit baskets held these spices. Medicine of colonial times was not based on sciences like biology and chemistry, but on observation and experience. Illnesses of today, like obesity and cancer, were not the same as colonial sicknesses, such as malaria and smallpox. Doctors and apothecaries were very much the same. Even though the apothecary owned a shop, he also fulfilled many other duties, such as training apprentices, performing surgery, and serving as a man midwife. The apothecary also visited the sick in their homes. The apothecary learned from the Indians and they helped him grow a garden full of useful herbs and roots for their medicines. Since the apothecary was very expensive, people often tried to treat themselves before seeking medical care. Like today's modern pharmacy, besides just having herbs and roots on the apothecary shelves, they also sold many other essential products products such as tea, coffee, soap, candles, and much more. Today, to become a licensed doctor requires many years of study, tests, and training. Although the apothecary had lots of knowledge, there was no official training for their trade because there was, because there was no official training, young boys at the age of six or seven could become an apprentice. No medical licenses were needed. After an apprenticeship, an apprentice became an official apothecary, able to mix medicines with precision. On most trades, little was known or published, but on the apothecary and surgeon's trades, there were many textbooks covering man, midwifery, pharmacy, surgery, and diseases. The tools of the apothecary were beautifully handcrafted and were a mortar and pestle, weights and scales, jars, and surgical instruments. A garden was also an essential part of the apothecary's job. The apothecaries used old and questionable methods that most often did not work. Bleeding a patient with a small knife, called a lancet, was one of these ancient remedies, believing that too much fluid in the body caused disease. Few medicines were purchased from England, but most were made by the apothecary from herbs, roots, tree bark, and some animal parts. Since some mixtures took many hours to make, and some even half a day, this process required patience and skill. First you had to weigh the ingredients, then grind them with a mortar and pestle. A hot poultice was a place made of plants and herbs. The mixture was spread on a warm moist cloth and applied to the body to reduce swelling and aid in the healing process. Herbs commonly used were lavender for headache and dizziness, chamomile for stomach aches and melancholy, and horehound mixed with honey relieved coughs. A cold cloth was applied to the body to reduce fever. The knowledge of plants and herbs became the basis of our modern medicine. Colonial life would have been very difficult without the apothecary because they would have nowhere to turn when ill. Apothecaries and doctors were respected members of the community. In fact, in 1775, four doctors signed the Declaration of Independence.